Hi guys, so whilst doing the Frugal February challenge, which I am so glad is over, I realized that I waste so much money on food. And I realized that if I could just change a couple of things in the way that I buy food and the way that I use food, I would really take off a lot of pressure off my budget and really free up some much needed cash. So I consulted with a few experts and a few people that I know personally that have really just nailed this part of their life and just know how to buy food wisely and use it up wisely. And I've put together a list of 17 different ideas as to how to save money on food just for you. Now I recommend that you watch all the way to the very end because there's actually a bit of a giveaway. I have something really exciting that I'm going to tell you about that you can get for free, which hopefully is going to save you a lot of money off your grocery bill. Tip number one is to utilize your freezer. Now, when you put food into your freezer, it's kind of like a time capsule and it's not just meat that you can put in there. You can put cheese, you can put eggs, you can put fruit. You can put um, potato chips is a great one when you open up a packet of chips and you don't eat the whole packet, pop it in the freezer and they actually come out crunchier. And another thing that I like to use my freezer space for is flour and rice and seeds and nuts. Now the benefit of doing that isn't so much about saving money in that it reduces the wastage because in Sydney we get all these disgusting little moths and maggots that come out in the humid seasons and they get their way into food and you can end up throwing out a huge amount of food when you check your pantry. So by having them kept in the freezer this really minimizes that wastage. Tip number two is to invest in a slow cooker. Now I didn't realize this, but slow cookers use less electricity than a light bulb. But the great thing about slow cookers is often the meals that are cooked in them are incredibly nutritious, but you're also cooking a large quantity of food. So that can serve as many meals for the whole family or for a long period of time. So it's a great way to cook in bulk economically and it's also incredibly time efficient because you can just leave it cooking whilst you go out and have a lovely day. Tip number three is to eat less meat and fish. Not only is this going to help your wallet but it's also going to help your waistline and is better for the environment. You can get a huge amount of protein from nuts and seeds if that's what you're worried about. Tip number four is to write a grocery list but check it with what you already have in your pantry and fridge. So many times I have come home from a big um, shopping exhibition and unpacking all my items and I'm putting things away only to discover that I already have three or four items of those already in the fridge or the pantry. When you stop and take the time to write a list and actually check what you already have, you're less likely to double up, triple up or quadruple up. Tip number five comes from my friend Tom and he says, cook once, eat twice. So when you're cooking dinner, try and cook a little bit extra so you can take it as a packed lunch to work the next day or even as a, for dinner the following night. Or you could even freeze the leftovers and save it for another day. Tip number six is exercise portion control. This is something I am really guilty of, particularly at dinner time when I'm loading up my plate and Rocco's. Sometimes we just simply don't need to eat that much, especially late in the day, because that can really impact your quality of sleep. So try and put less food on your plate, which will mean you will buy less food. Tip number seven comes from my own mother, and I remember her saying this forever, and she used to always say, eat up the bits. So with all those funny little odd bits of leftovers, you know, some avocado, maybe some meat, some cheese, maybe a bit of salad, Put it all on a plate and make a beautiful, colorful meal of all sorts of interesting different bits of food. And you'll feel good because you're not wasting food by throwing it away and your fridge will be looking a lot cleaner and tidier afterwards. Tip number eight comes from my own little investigation and that is check the comparables. The other day I was at the supermarket and I was buying some toothpaste and I was reaching for a pump pack. And something made me stop and look at the price and look at the little um, indication below and it actually told me how much that, co that tube of toothpaste cost per 100 grams. I then stopped and stood back and looked at the whole smorgasbord of different toothpastes and I realized I could buy exactly the same brand of toothpaste and actually in a larger container 
for a cheaper price. And the reason why I was, if I went for the tube option, it was much better value for money. It was not only cheaper, but I got more product. So when you are shopping, and you can do this both in the supermarket and online, stop and take a look at all the other competitors and properly compare the prices and the weights. You'll be surprised as to all the little marketing um, catches they get you on to help you try and buy the more expensive product and therefore waste more of your hard earned precious money. Number nine comes from Claire Glender from Drink, Eat, Repeat. And she recommends shopping in the morning. And I think this is a fantastic idea and this is something that I used to do a lot myself. When you shop in the morning, nobody is there. You literally zoom down the aisles. It is really quick and efficient. You're not dodging around people or worried that you might bump into someone when you're not maybe looking your best because my shopping, grocery shopping outfit is pretty tragic. Um, but because there's less people in the um, grocery store, you can actually see the specials. They're not, they're not all these bodies like blocking the, the signs. And as the saying goes, the early bird catches the first worm. You will potentially get the good bargains before everybody else snaps them up. Tip number nine is also again from Claire Glender, and that is befriend your butcher. When you actually talk to the butcher and ask them like what's on special, what do they recommend, um, what is the best meat to be buying at the moment, they can give you some really valuable advice which can save you a lot of money when you go to check out. Number 11 is actually another one which I recommend myself and that is to do your grocery shopping online. I know you're probably thinking, hang on Canna, what about the delivery costs? They can be quite expensive, but bear with me for a moment. When you're on a tight budget and you're shopping around your grocery store with your trolley and you're putting things in, even though you are maybe roughly adding up in your head how much all these things are costing and how much they're adding up to, you don't really know what the true cost of your grocery spend until you've scanned all your items and you're standing in that queue in front of a group of people and you're looking at what the total bill comes to and about to pay. I know for myself if I am on a tight budget for that particular week or that particular month, there is no way I'm gonna say, oh, okay, hang on, I've spent $20 more than I need to, put this back, that back, book that back, and disrupt all the people behind me and create a lot of frustration. I will just politely go, okay, no problem, crap, I'm gonna to have to be tight with my money somewhere else. The benefit of shopping online is you can see your grocery bill tallying up as you're shopping online, as you're adding things in. And when you go to checkout, you can do the last minute review of all those items in there. And if you have blown your budget for this week, you can then go through and delete or remove or reduce any of those luxuries or things that you don't really need um, out of that total spend. This is something that I recommend and I do myself. And when it comes to paying for that delivery fee, yes, sometimes it can be expensive. For example, at my local supermarket, they charge me $11, but I actually look at it and think it's excellent value for money because that $11 is saving me from having to get in the car, brave the traffic, park the car, get out of the car, often with Rocco who can really slow me down, no offense Rocco, um, battle with him through the supermarket, um, pay for everything, scan everything, get it then all into my car, drive back to my house, carry all the groceries back into my house. Now, I would much prefer to pay someone $11 to do all that for me. To me, that is money well spent and a good investment. But actually, some supermarkets do offer delivery savers, and that is where you can buy or pre-purchase a whole year's worth of delivery at a massive discount. So that is another great way of really shaving down your budget bill much further. Tip number 12 comes from Leela Lutz from Momentum for Life, and she says, buy foods that are in fashion, particularly fruit and vegetables. These are in season, so therefore there's abundance of them and they are much cheaper. And you can also utilize your freezer to make sure that they last throughout the year. Tip number 13 comes again from yours truly, and this is something I've discovered myself. I found that when I go to the deli section of my supermarket, I save a lot more money and get much better value for money than when I buy the cheeses and meats that are pre-packaged. When I look at, say, a packet of cheese, say, Jarlsberg cheese that costs, say, $4.50 for, say, 100 grams, I can get 150 grams worth of Jarlsberg cheese from going to the deli section where they actually shave it off for me, cut it up and put it into a plastic bag. Obviously, this not made, might not be the same for every single supermarket, but it's something I have come across numerous times. So definitely do your research and check out the prices between the two different sections. Number 14 is to shop loyally. 
I'm a big fan of loyalty reward programs and for my local supermarket they've got a really good one. Even just this afternoon, literally 20 minutes ago, I received an email from them and they offer, were offering me free weekend delivery and, and $10 off my total grocery spend. Now that is a great saving, it may only be a little bit but you know what, over the long run these savings really do add up. Also, when you have a good loyalty reward program, they'll let you know when your favorite products are on special, as well as any new products that might be similar to what you're currently buying that you also may like. Number 15 is to go with quality over quantity. Now, I'm gonna use the example of chocolate here. I have a huge sweet tooth. I absolutely love chocolate. And when it comes to milk chocolate, I could buy family block after family block after family block just to get me through one week. But recently I realized this is not a very healthy habit to have going on in my house and I'm not leading by example for Rocco. So I have started buying, it does cost quite a bit more, but I've been buying dark um, chocolate and this one is the Alter Ego Dark Quinoa Organic Chocolate. Now I've had that going in my fridge for I think almost two weeks and yes it looks empty but there is actually a tiny bit left. Now, Normally over a two week period, I probably would have gone through, I don't know, I hate to think actually, I don't want to say how much um, milk chocolate, but this has, you know, a high quality chocolate, really, um, I guess, gets me through those moments when I need some chocolate. And because it's high quality cocoa, I don't need to eat as much and therefore I don't spend as much. So I highly recommend looking at quality over quantity and particularly with cleaning products. Obviously there are lots of different cleaning products out there, but some of the slightly more expensive ones just tend to do a much better job and you tend to use less product. So work out the cleaning products that work for you and stick to them. Number 16 is limit your snacks and treats. Now I came across an article the other day and it really inspired me. It was talking about minimalism and children and this mother wrote that she has reduced the snacks that her children have. She forces them when they eat to sit down and eat a meal properly at the table and engage with the family. And because they are mindfully eating their food and consciously eating their food, they tend to feel more fulfilled and don't need to snack during the day. And she said one of the benefits of doing that is she doesn't waste money on snacks all the time and also her car is a lot cleaner. It's not got you know crumbs down the, all the cracks. Now this really resonated with me because my car is constantly disgusting with all the yogurt and biscuits and chips and lolly bags that pick Rocco has picked up from a party and much in the car as I drive around. So this is really interesting and when I look at my grocery bill, which I did in detail the other day, I realized a lot of my groceries are made up of snacks. So from now on, I'm gonna make a conscious effort to when, when Rocco and I sit down and eat a meal together, that we eat properly and we eat enough to get us through till the next meal so that we don't need to waste money on snacks. And again, I am very, very guilty of this because I'm partial to the odd muffin or banana bread with a coffee. So I think I'm also gonna benefit from this. Number 17, the final one, and that is to do a food plan. Sit down and work out what meals you're going to cook for each night and also match it against your activities. So if you know that you're going to be working late at work or kids have got a sport until late at night, make sure you've got a really healthy, easy meal ready to go so that you don't get tempted to get home delivery or takeaway. Now on that note, I have some very exciting news for you. Claire Glender from Drink, Eat, Repeat has very kindly put together an incredible meal plan for you. Now this meal plan is for seven days um, with three meals a day and the total spend, um, which includes even things like salt and pepper, comes to $60. Now it, I've had a look at this, it's absolutely incredible and it's free to everybody watching this video. So I'm gonna put the link in the description box below. So I highly recommend you go and have a look at it. Now I've had a look at some of these recipes and they are incredibly easy to follow. The photographs, the meals just look absolutely delicious. There's spaghetti carbonara, there's porridges, um, there's a delicious looking um, creamy curry, really easy to follow, really inspiring. And she actually said, if you're clever enough, you can actually make this cover for two people um, for one week with the same amount of meals, which is three meals for seven days. Um, and 
it will cost only $80 for the two people. So if you are on a tight budget, I highly recommend going and having a good go at doing a food plan because that is definitely a great way of saving money. Now, if you have any other food saving tips, please put them in the comments box below. As I said, Rocco sharing is caring and it's a good thing to do and makes you feel really good about yourself. And I'm hoping that I'm building up a bit of a community here on my channel where we can all help each other to find savings here and there that are really going to add up and allow us to do bigger and better things with the money that we create in our life. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe. As I said, go over and check out Drink, Eat, Repeat's website. It's fantastic. And I will see you next week in either Money Monday or Lifestyle Love. Ciao for now.